Welcome to Best Horror Movie You Never Saw, where we talk about examining films that have flown under the radar or gained traction throughout the years, earning them a place as a cult classic or underrated gem that was either before its time or has aged like a fine wine. Today we're going to be discussing the cult horror comedy Feast, about a group of diverse characters who are introduced with nifty character introduction graphics, including Jason Mewes, hilariously as himself, and Henry Rollins, who was cast against type as a dippy yuppie motivational speaker. We're stuck here. I can see this. But what we need to do is think outside the box. Stuck in a remote bar in the middle of nowhere, where they all get attacked by vicious creatures rendered in awesome practical glory, who take the characters out one by one, viciously and gruesomely, as they try to find a way to stay alive. Feast is interesting to talk about because he actually began life as part of a reality show series. Yep, back in the early 2000s, Ben Affleck and Matt Damon decided to work with HBO on producing and hosting a show about giving up-and-coming writers and directors a chance to make their first feature films, to then be distributed by Miramax, where Affleck and Damon made a name for themselves with their indie darling debut, Good Will Hunting. The show was called Project Greenlight. If you want to be a filmmaker, the single hardest thing is to get people to believe in you. Project Greenlight is doing just that. It's the opportunity of a lifetime. And the first season they produced a would-be indie drama that premiered at Sundance called Stolen Summer. From the writers and producer Matt Damon, Ben Affleck, about religious strife in the 60s, while the second season was a quirky dramedy starring Shia LaBeouf, Meet Kelly, Weekend War Reenactor, called The Battle of Shaker Heights. The problem is even though the show itself was relatively successful, the films themselves would run into production problems, go over budget, and not even come close to recouping their costs. For instance, Stolen Summer only made $130,000 on an almost $2 million budget, while The Battle of Shaker Heights fared only slightly better, making $280,000 on a $1 million budget. Not exactly a blockbuster. Now, that is to be somewhat expected. With obvious exceptions, character dramas and quirky indie comedies rarely light up the box office. However, films that are known to be good investments are horror films. In fact, making low-budget horror films that turn around to make big profits is Bloomhouse's entire current economic model. And that's who are footing the bill for distribution and taking a bath on these Project Greenlight films definitely thought as well. So after the move from HBO to Bravo in its third season, and bringing on Nightmare on Elm Street's Wes Craven as another producer and host, Wes Craven is a master of genre. Best known were Nightmare on Elm Street and Scream. The showrunners decided to produce a horror-themed film. Eventually, they decided on Patrick Melton and Mark Marcus Dunstan's irreverent horror comedy script, Feast. What would you compare your script to, like, in tone? Evil Dead 2 yeah. was a remarkable influence. And chose John Gulliger as director. My name is John Gulliger. I live in Silver Lake, California. I'm 45 years old. I'm a cameraman and an editor. And I moonlight shooting wedding videos. Ugh. We're all first timers, which again was the gimmick of the show. After that, the cast was assembled, and with the exception of the aforementioned Jason Mewes and Henry Rollins, hey, isn't that the wrong letter on his chest? Oh yeah. We're mostly unknown, but do a surprisingly admirable job anyway, elevating the material and giving gravitas to admittedly and in some cases purposely stock roles. This is especially true of the characters simply credited as heroine and Tuffy, played by Navi Rawat and Krista Allen respectively, who are both able to be tough mama bear horror archetypes in the classic camera mode, a la Alien Ripley or Terminator 2 Sarah Connor. <laughs> You can risk your life, but not mine. My daughter is out there waiting for me. Hey, if anyone has a right to have a complete meltdown right now, it's me. But right now, I don't have the time because right now, you morose motherfuckers are gonna get off your ass and get ready to roll. Also nailing the surprisingly tender, vulnerable moments with aplomb. Even Eric Dane, who played multiple man in X-Men 3, does a great job with his short appearance as the doomed first hero. Who the hell are you? I'm the guy that's gonna save your ass. 
And even if we're talking about the likes of Muse and Rollins, they also put in fine performances themselves, with Rollins especially doing great, playing a subtly comedic performance as a douchey yuppie motivational speaker. We just need to believe in each other. Believe in all of us. We need to make a stand. Who's even dimensional enough to be willing to do heroic acts. No, ma'am. It would be an honor to accompany you on this dangerous journey. Rather than simply being a cartoon character, these kinds of characters in horror movies tend to be. It's also always fun to see another 30 Rock alum in a horror movie. In this case, stand-up comedian Judah Friedlander as the Weasley beer guy. All of a sudden, bang! She drops. After seeing Karen Bowden in previous episodes, Tucker and Dale vs. Evil. Due to being a low priority, Feast wasn't given a super wide release, but it did get released to theaters nonetheless, making only about $750,000 on an approximately $3 million budget. However, it ended up making money on home release, and so director Gulliger was able to parlay that success into two direct to video sequels Feast 2, Sloppy Seconds in 2008, and Feast 3, ugh, The Happy Finish in 2009 with lower budgets and even more diminishing returns. Now, while the plot of the film is nothing we haven't seen before, evoking other famous group of characters fighting against supernatural forces in a remote location a la Evil Dead or From Dusk Till Dawn, the characters are also trapped in a bar. What makes Feast stand out at all is its irreverent tone. Oh dear. What? What's he doing? They're humping! As well as its obvious love of horror tropes, doing its best is to subvert our expectations from what we're normally accustomed to and going further than most horror films typically go. This includes things like the previously mentioned quick killing off of the badass Ash Williams as Kiro five minutes into his introduction, but even that leads to a reveal that his wife is the actual hero in the story, with the added bonus of a tragic backstory about getting back to her daughter. Look, my daughter is waiting for me. I don't have a choice. Who too is then killed off. <laughs> as well as the death of the token cute kid, who was quickly dispatched in a surprisingly gruesome and shocking way. Which are all mean-spirited deaths that go a long way in keeping the tension ratcheted up throughout the film, which never lets you feel safe or at ease. It's basically the death of Janet Leigh in Psycho or Drew Barrymore at the beginning of Scream times three, on steroids. It makes every corner of the bar a potential death trap, and every break in the action or joke a potential prelude to disaster. Y'all go ahead though, you storm out of here, make a bunch of racket, they won't even notice me. They like food that moves. Suspense basically never lets up, which is a hard feat to achieve in even the best horror films. The humor also helps sell a lot of the film, with many hilarious off-color jokes in the character introductions that keeps the tone light, such as how the hero has life expectancy certain, then dies immediately, how the kid's occupation is tax refund, and how Hot Wheels won't die because we don't kill cripples. That kind of abrasive sense of humor obviously isn't for everybody, but it's nice to see a film sometimes embrace an unapologetic mean streak like that. Now the best scene is obviously the first attack of the small feral feast monster. It begins with a well done approximation of Sam Raimi's famous Evil Dead POV shot, a great sense of suspense and oncoming dread, and the previously mentioned iconic introduction and death of the hero character, and then just a flurry of chaos, killing off more than half the cast we spent time being introduced to in a matter of seconds. Is it gone? <laughs> what the fuck? fuck? And really selling the threat of the monsters in an efficient and effective way, setting the stage for the rest of the film. It also has a monster puppet humping a moose head, so that's at least something you don't see every day. Basically, if you enjoy your horror to be subversive, irreverent, and more than a little nasty, Feast is the movie for you. You can stream it on most streaming sites, as well as buy it on Blu-ray or DVD. So there you have it. If you enjoyed this video, please like and subscribe, and if you have a suggestion for our next episode, please leave it in the comments below.